China's domestic Shenzhen stock index did something interesting lately. It closed outside bear market territory for the first time in more than 12 months. Is this a big case of buying Chinese stocks or sell them if you own them? Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Brian Sullivan. We've got Aaron Gibbs of SP Global, Max Wolf of Manhattan Venture Partners. Aaron, uh, I guess now's a good time to remind people that they probably can't buy stocks in the Shenzhen unless they've got a domestic agent in China. It's very difficult to buy domestic Chinese stocks. Still, what does this no longer in bear market territory move for the Shenzhen tell you? So for us, I think it's really saying, one, we're going to more of a risk on. I think they've gotten rid of a lot of the, the corruption and concerns uh, over their GDP growth and, and uh, the overall future. But for us, we really like this. And, and there are some ETFs that can certainly give you Chinese exposure as an overall diversified portfolio. And when you look at the Shenzhen index to the S&P 500 index, there's only about a 12% correlation over the past five years. So you really wow. are getting too, yeah, really low. So it has increased slightly over the past year, but we're still talking about a 20% correlation. So this is true diversification from the U.S. market. Um, and so we certainly see this as an opportunity for growth. They definitely have higher GDP expectations, even though they've been ratcheting them down. And the market has gotten to two and a half trillion dollars. It's not a small market anymore. So it's definitely something that uh, investors should be looking at. So if somebody, Max, strolls up to the cocktail party and says, hey, Chinese stocks lead the U.S. market. You can point them to this segment and say, Aaron Gibbs said, you're wrong, except for a very small amount of the time. But does it mean something for a broader market perspective or is it just literally a domestic Chinese scenario? Well, I would try to recover immediately from the fact that they would want to talk to me at a cocktail party and my heart would go out to them. But during that <laughs> emotional frenzy that I'd be under, un, you know, experiencing at that moment, what I would say is, look, China is a big part of the global economy. It's a rising part. The markets are pretty thick there, certainly more than they used to be. So some exposure makes sense. The exposure would probably have to be through a derivative product or vehicle right now, but it makes sense. The thing I would say, though, is that it's very retail driven. It's very domestic. It's very inward looking. So what you kind of you're kind of betting on a barometer of the Chinese investor, mostly retail sentiment about China. And there are some informational issues sometimes in the Chinese market. So with some trepidation, I would have to agree you should have some exposure. And it's been in the shadows a long time. So it makes a certain sense that it's lower correlation. It should be part of what you do get exposure to in a diversified portfolio. And it so doesn't, I would, it doesn't agree. mean, Max, does it also that the Chinese economy is getting better? I mean, stocks have gone up anywhere in the world during slowing economies, too. I don't know if it's slowing, but I'm saying you shouldn't read it as a positive for the economy necessarily, correct? Yeah, no, I think I'd be real careful about that. There, there's a bit of a gambling culture there. This is kind of part of that culture. And while the market is much more mature and thicker and the reporting is better than it used to be. There are still a lot of retail investors who have limited experience in these markets that can move the, the names around as part of the reason the correlation is lower. Strangely, although not great for investment diversification, we tend to see lower correlation when mm -hmm. markets are a little less integrated or the decision making metrics are different domestically. And Aaron, just a last one to you before we go. We, we, we brought this segment up because we thought the move was interesting, but is this Shenzhen something you watch? I mean, I'm sure you guys look at everything at SP Global, thus the name, but is this on your radar every day? Not every day, but certainly on a regular basis. Um, when we look at emerging markets, China is really on the cusp of being classified as developed. Um, there are basically only two classifications that are holding it back. One is their GDP per capita is just below. It's 14 instead of 15,000. So any day now, it's going to cross that. And the other is foreign ownership. And we know that that's part of their politics and opening up the economy. So we see this maybe within a year, perhaps even less of, or you know, maybe two years of actually being classified as a developed market and really opening up to a greater investor base. All right, Aaron and Max, thank you for your insight. Appreciate it. Interesting look there at the domestic Chinese market. Thank you for tuning in to Trading Nation. We'll see you next time.